Stephen Hendry. Player in the game who would have played that boss on the wheel. He's a phenomenal boss. They are young men destined to great heights in the world of snooker. Red, my love. Never need a catch. <laughs> what a load of rubbish. What a load of bill. Oh, would you believe that? And that really must hurt this young man. A few heart stoppers for the acquaintances we're building. A few heart stoppers? Mine, <laughs> <laughs> not yours, my son. Stephen Henry pops the black for the first time. The highest break of the tournament. Display of potting to pick up the Scottish title. Yeah! <laughs> the audience gives a standing ovation to this 18-year-old Scotsman who becomes the Winfield Master in 1980. You do the business now, son. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome the Pride of Scotland, Stephen Hendry. Well, how lucky Snooker is to have turned up with another talent like this. He's going to set the game alight, this young man. We just coming up to his twelfth uh, birthday. It was Christmas time, and uh, I was in a shop in the town, and I saw a snooker table, and I thought, you know, because I like snooker, that I would uh, buy him when it was just a small six by three. Uh, and from there, it was, it was amazing. I just thought that anyone could do it because, I mean, I'd never seen anyone else playing the game. Um, I hadn't even seen it on television. So I just took it that it was an easy game and suppose anyone could play it. His father took him up to a full-size table in a club to see what he was like because he wouldn't leave the snooker table alone. And he took him up and he really played well. And Gordon came back and he said, he's a world champion. He's going to win the world. And from that moment on, that's what the whole house moved around Stephen and his snooker. Coming to the table is the little giant of snooker, looking even younger than his 14 years. Still going to school, he... I was very nervous before I went on, but it made me play better. Um, I got on the table and I was putting balls because I was concentrating so much on trying to play well and trying to make a good impression. Oh, this is absolutely amazing, Ted, there. I mean, for somebody... Going back to the very first night and seeing Stephen, I knew that I'd seen something very, very special. I mean, obviously, I'd watched White, Davis, Higgins, but Stephen was something very, very special. Absolutely magic. And another beauty. I mean, it was like, probably, if you're into Bali, going to Bali and watching Nureyev, he was uh, just absolutely magnificent around the table. Ian Doyle, who I knew was an admirer of Stephen, he had watched Stephen winning in a couple of tournaments, you know, mainly the amateur tournaments. He approached me, and although I didn't sign right away after about nine months, I knew that Stephen needed the financial help. You know, he had to be in the best hotels and he had to be mixing with the players, so I decided to sign up with him. Stephen, look at me now, would you dish your eyes? That's it. Excellent, excellent. One. Ian, can you just give me a gentle smile? A smile. Yeah. Um, could you change the position of your hands, perhaps? I mean, no, 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 I, I, I like that idea. That's, that's good, that's good. Exactly. That's lovely, yeah. Businessman and a fan, I think I'm both. Um, <clears throat> I don't think, uh, even today, the, the thrill you get just watching them in a match, the highs when you win, the lows when you lose, it's something special. 55. I think to be involved with somebody with the talent that he had, subject to him going down the right roads, being directed 59. down the right roads, success was, it was there. I mean, there was no ifs, buts or maybes. He just had 54. to succeed. A magnificent display of putting by Stephen Henry to pick up the Scottish title and the trophy. <laughs> well, a magnificent performance then by 17-year-old Stephen Hendry, cut there by his father, and he overcomes Matt Gibson of Glasgow at 10 frames to 5.
has a natural temperament, which is his greatest asset. His temperament is absolutely perfect. Naturally, as a young man, he's got a very, very keen eye. He, he puts everything in sight at the moment. I think uh, maturity will alter his game slightly. Uh, he will uh, learn to be more cautious on certain occasions, which will win him more matches. But uh, there's just a natural ability. Uh, it's just some charisma that young Stephen has. I was uh, very pleased to be on the end of the microphone when he won the Scottish professional title a couple of years ago. I hope I'm on the microphone when he becomes world champion, but uh, it's my guess he'll be a millionaire before he becomes world champion. Stephen Henry, Alex Higgins has uh, returned to the snooker circuit recently. Do you think that's a good thing for the sport? I think it is, yeah, because um, Alex is such a great draw for the game. Perhaps. The great thing is that he now understands that I'm not suggesting things or asking him to do things that are anything else but benefiting his career. He's such an exciting player. He's tremendous. Well, I thought you gave all the right responses there, Stephen. Um, perhaps there was a little too much body movement when you were answering. It's not an easy thing to do, and I think it's one no, it's of harder the... It's harder than playing. Yes, you need a lot of practice. Do you remember what it looked like? genius. <laughs> do you remember what it looked like, actually, when we started? Uh, no? I'd rather not. <laughs> Yeah. Doesn't look much like you now, does it? Horrid. Looks disastrous. Yeah. Might be very, very pleased with the end result. Yeah. Gives us some. I. Hey, when you when is this for? When are you won it for? Yesterday. As usual. So you're making the backs of these longer and longer every time, Robert. Well, you need to. Uh, when you go over the table, it goes away up your back. It starts showing shirt. I know, but it looks, doesn't look good, does it? It looks good when it's on the telly, it's not, it's just... He understands these things are um, important. You make it easy, don't you? Uh. And as a result of that, it makes the relationship very, very much easier than, say, it was last year or even two years ago. Because he's now understanding these things. These things have got to be done professionally. In a bit tighter, that's it. Nice you're like a little buggy. That's it. Nice smells. Thanks, Stephen. That's lovely. Quite a waiting one, though. Isn't it? Well, that's a heavy cue. We do them in light medium and heavy. Mm hmm. The range of cues. In terms of total earnings, it's very difficult to say just exactly what the final figure would be. But I think during the course of this year, particularly with his, his progress in the rankings and his tournament winnings, I think we've probably got to look at um, a figure of somewhere around 600,000. But as long as they look like Stephen Henry and buy the cues... Oh, Stephen if there's Henry any other players like Stephen Henry, let us know about them. <laughs> sure about that? <laughs> it goes very well, because uh, Ian knows that um, he can trust me playing a snooker, and I know that I can trust him doing the business. Obviously, I have ups and downs all the time. We'll have our little arguments about things, but um, more or less, in the end, we always come out um, friends. I think the most important thing at this particular phase of his career is to ensure that the commercial side doesn't take over from the playing side. <laughs> That's a good shot. <laughs>